In this lecture, we are going to write our first ad together. I don't have any ideas pre-planned. Um, we're gonna really write this together. Hope you guys are not getting bored of me. We've been together for quite some time now um, and we have a lot more to go. So let's pace ourselves. Anyway, here we are back in the Google Ads interface. So the final URL is gonna be the, remember, the, UR, the URL that we want people to actually go to, not the display URL. So I'm gonna go back to Poppin, and because this ad group, if you remember, is not a specific ad group, it's the general office chair ad group, I'm just gonna take the top line um, office chair page. So I don't want them to go to the active seating page, just click up here, I want them to go to this page where they, they can then self-select the type of office chair that they want. So I'm gonna, copy this URL, bring it in here, select all, paste, and I'm getting a warning. Oh, right, it has to be HTTPS. So we're gonna do add HTTPS over there, and we're gonna go and write some headlines. So I wanna incorporate all the different things we've spoken about, but of course I can't put everything into one ad. So my headline one, hmm. Let's think about price. I think that this is an industry, and of course that I haven't done real research, and we would do real research, and you have to do your research, and you have to know your products, but I think office chairs have a huge range of price, and if somebody's just searching for a generic office chair, they might be looking for an office chair that's $70, they might be looking to spend $5,000 on an office chair, right? So I wanna first convey the price range we're in, and I also wanna con convey legitimacy. So I'm gonna try to use that registered trademark. I'm gonna be popping. Um, option R, office chairs, title case uh, from 299. No, we're 33 characters out of 30. And let's see, I could take two out by taking out these spaces. Ooh, I could, I could take out my registered symbol. I think I'm gonna have to do that. I think I'll have to take out, because I don't see what else I can cut. Pop in office chairs from 299. All right, so we'll have to go like this. 30 out of 30, pop in office chairs from 299. And also one more good piece of advice, and I hate it when I see people do this. Don't leave out space that Google's giving you. Yeah, if you get 20 characters, 25, that's fine, of course, but don't have a headline with 10 characters. Don't have a description with 30 characters. I, it irks me so much when I see people just giving up free real estate that Google's offering. Pop in office chairs from 299. So that's gonna help me um, first, just tell people what price range we're in. You know, we're starting at 299. So if you're looking for a $50 task chair um, or a folding chair or whatever it is, that's not us, okay? Minimum $300. Headline two, what makes Poppin unique? What makes them stand out? And I think it's their, um, they're very vibrant with their colors. They're very color coordinated as a company. If you, and if you do take a minute to check, check out your site, you'll see that that's a big theme. They match their desk accessories to their chairs, to their desks. It's a really sort of cool, cohesive, artistic office chair company. So maybe we could talk about that. I think that's something which is unique that most other office products companies don't probably, probably don't talk about. So I'm just gonna talk out loud here. Vibrant colors, uh, vibrant colors that match your personality. Wow, I'm way over, 42 characters. Vibrant colors, uh, about unique vibrant colors available. Oh, I'm one character over. Exactly, 30 out of 30. Unique, vibrant colors in stock. All right, so it's, if somebody is potentially, and I think this does a couple things. It conveys the type of company we are and it'll probably give a good prediction in the user's mind of what types of chairs they're gonna see. If you're looking for more of that very corporate um, look, you're, we're, we would probably not be talking about vibrant colors. If you're looking for a more fun, modern workspace, then this is the type of headline you wanna see. So I think we're doing a good job already at conveying a really strong um, focus and a really strong image of our brand, right? We have a certain price point, Poppin is the name, and unique, vibrant colors in stock. The only type of company selling office chairs that would talk about unique and vibrant colors is that sort of fun, modern, techie um, vibe for the, you know an office, open office space or something like that. You have the option now in Google Ads to add a headline three. Of course, only two headlines will show up, but you could write a headline three and Google will substitute it at different times to test which combinations of headlines work the best. So we could write a different version of our headline two, or we could write a completely different um, headline altogether. So let me jump over back into the website and see if I could figure out anything that I would wanna put off the bat that sort of makes them stand out. I see that they have a wide range of styles on their site, and I think a lot of other companies will sell a very specific style. They have these rolling chairs, they have uh, uh, fabric chairs, they have all different sorts of seating, and we're talking again about generic searches. We wanna sort of try to cover all our bases. If 
this was the ad group that spoke about rolling chairs, then we would specifically talk about the features of our rolling chairs. Um, so we might, maybe we'll say, um, every, choose from a full line of styles. Oh, I'm not gonna, uh, how about view our, View our full range of styles, that works. Remember, I would do more research. Would I, if does this company have specific accolades? Have they won any awards? Um, are they known for the durability of their chairs or how long their chairs last or things like that? Or are they known for the, a, a really unique warranty? Um, that's something that I would put in, I would say, let's say free shipping, 30 days guaranteed. If that was the case, that would be a great potential headline number three or headline number two. And of course, like I said, or I'm not sure if I mentioned this, it's very important to always have at least at least two ads minimum in an ad group, but I would usually recommend four ads. That way you could test four different versions of a headline through A-B testing, um, but at the very, very, very minimum, have at least two different ads in every single ad group. And putting in a third headline does not mean that you've put in a second full ad. So you have a couple display paths that we'll want to clean up. So maybe we'll do something like um, office-chairs, all chairs. You know, something like that. Or because this is a general, maybe we'll just say you're gonna to go to poppin.com office chairs because that's, you know, this is the general ad group. We could leave path two empty. Now we have 90 characters for two descriptions. Um, let's say they have yeah, over 3,500 businesses have been using our high quality office chairs for over 20 years. And now I don't have any more time for a call to action though, right? So again, we wanna think about that BG Fog behavioral model. I think that a person is sufficiently motivated to buy an office chair, they probably need it, but that perceived ability like, can I afford it? Is this the type of thing that I want? Will it work for me? Is it gonna, um, is it gonna be comfortable, et cetera? Those are all things that would fall under that perceived ability canopy, perceived ability camp, part of the equation. So by giving legitimacy, by telling us of the high quality, by, by talking about our length and business helps make a person feel that they're more likely to be satisfied with our purchase. So, um, but there's no specific call to action. But again, that's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to write click me, right? Um, I think that when you talk about these three concepts, quality, years in business, and the amount of clients we have that have bought from us, that's a very, very powerful ad. And again, you wanna be measurable, objective, and verifiable. So 3,500 businesses, that's objective. High quality is measurable, it's verifiable. When you get to come to the website, we can talk about the quality. Hopefully the landing page talks about the quality of the chairs. 20 years in business, it's objective, it's specific. It's not, these are, we're not using unsubstantiated superlatives. If I had more space, I would talk more about the specifics of the quality, because just saying high quality is a little bit uns unsubstantiated, um, but it's okay to have the um, website substantiate that if, if the website is substantiating that. Description two, maybe it'll be a, a slightly different variation on the same, on the same theme. Um, something like join, join 35,000 plus customers um, who can't whose behinds are in love with our advanced cushioning tech technology. All right, so another, this, this, this description brings in a couple different elements, right? A little bit of attitude, a little bit of humor, like our customers whose behinds are in love because these are chairs, so their butts are in love with our advanced cushioning technology. We talk about a little bit something specific about the quality, advanced cushioning technology. Again, you have that legitimacy, 35,000 plus customers, um, and 
that's a pretty good description. I think that, that plays nicely with these headlines. And again, the headlines are the most important factor. So I think that qualifying by price and talking about the unique vibrant colors, which gives off that brand personality is really important for a headline. But if I were to AB test this ad, I would put something about our customers in, in, in the second headline. And I would run those two ads against each other because I've, I've written thousands and thousands of ads and I've analyzed hundreds and hundreds of accounts. But I'm, I know enough to know that I can't predict which one will work better. I don't know if a headline that talks about our unique and vibrant colors and a price qualifier will work better than a headline with, let's say, a price qualifier and then talking about how we have 35,000 plus customers and we have advanced cushioning technology. I would test those, right? And that would be a great test. Test those different headlines. You could open up um, URL options to put in your traffic tracking templates at the ad level. If you're going to use tracking templates, you'll almost always use them at the campaign level, so we don't need to do that now. And plus, we already spoke about what those are. And of course, you could see some previews, um, a desktop preview of what this ad will look like. It's not showing us any previews of ad extensions. And we could see a preview of what our ad will look like on a mobile device with, with a nice little display URL over here that looks really clean. And if you click on this little button here, Google will actually show us some example ads. And um, I don't think you need to look through those because our ads are always going to be a lot better. And once you come down, you click done. You have the option to now create another ad. I could duplicate this ad if I want to and work from there. I could, I could trash this ad if I'd like to and work from there. I could click new ad and just write another ad. I'm not going to do that now because it's just going to be repetitive to go through the same thing. Um, we're going to be building out this campaign in a lot more detail and a lot more size and scope as we move along. I'll click done. Um, it actually saved a second ad. I'm just going to delete one because it's the same thing. I have one ad and I'm going to go ahead and click save and continue and go on to billing. So now you really have a lot of good information about effective ad writing. You understand some psychological principles. You understand the BJ5 behavioral model. You understand the anatomy of expanded text ads. You understand character limits. You understand compliance issues and you understand a lot of best practices. I think you're now in a really good position to write ads as good as anybody else. It just takes some time. It takes some effort. It takes some research. It takes some creativity. It takes some good thought. It takes an understanding of the business and the products. But I'm absolutely confident in, in you that you could do it. And I'm not just saying that to make you feel good. I'm not just saying that as like a rah, rah, rah. I've really seen people in our office that came in totally unable to write a decent ad. And they went on to learn, to train, to practice, to test, to research, and they came out incredibly, incredibly effective ad copywriters. And I have no doubt that you could do the same with just a little bit of hard work. So we're going to click save and continue and move on to billing. And in the next section, I'm going to walk you through setting up your Google ad billing. Um, pretty straightforward. There's a couple different billing options. We want to get that out of the way. It should be a quick section. And we'll then get into keywords, the heartbeat of your Google Ads account. And we maybe scratch the surface a drop about keywords, but we really haven't even begin, begun to touch it. So I look forward to seeing you guys very soon in the very next lecture.